Grand Rising, my friends. Welcome back. Hey there. What's up to those who rock with me? The most beautiful subscribers in several dozen known solar systems. If you're new, hello. Join up, pull up a cheer, you know. You get along with the program. Learn here that I am not your financial advisor. I am not your medical advisor. Have, we have no role. I'm not consulting in any role. or We have no financial or any type of form of contact besides entertainment and entertainment in both directions. So, well, let's look, go through really quickly. The, the market did not do so well today uh, down, but now, you know, here you see the NASDAQ, X&P, and fi, um, Dow Jones 500. For those who are not looking at the screen, just listening, I'm actually pointing them. I'm not going to say all of these numbers, but it's just a shade under, um, you know, zero. So it's 0 0.14, 0 0.24, 0 0.34 in terms of down today. Tesla had a pretty good day. They were up um, 13. Oh, so they must, yeah, they, the high today was $8.12. Uh, $8. $812. Well, they, I think it the low was $796. And it ended the day at 805. I believe yeah, the last was 805. So Tesla is starting to creep back up. It was at 900 earlier this year, but that was after a huge run up last year. And, it, you know, the top came down, cooled off for about the majority of the year. But see, Tesla still having a couple multiples in there. Remember, there's none of this is financial advice. This is just my own personal opinion that I use for entertainment purposes myself. If I was to be. Thinking about investing in things, some of the stuff I say may take, you know, may, never mind. Anyway. But anyway, Tesla price to have a couple more multiples left. Multiples meaning that some, ARK Invest and others believe that Tesla will get up to, at the current levels now, which would be equivalent to 3000 a share. Now, if it's split, because remember, it split last year in five. Technically, Tesla right now would be 4000 a share from where it was at last year. Uh, yeah, split five ways. Tesla, Apple split four, and Tesla split five. <sighs> I can't remember the details, but something like that. But anyway, so either between 3200 and 4000 where at some point last year it was probably a hundred and some dollars, and then it went up to now, like I said, equivalent of thirty either three thousand two hundred to four thousand, depending on if it split five to four. I can't remember which one was Tesla's, which versus Apple. I think Tesla split by five, but anyway. Cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, dom uh, dominance has come down a little bit tiny. And also the market cap has come down a shade under uh, 2.3 trillion. Oh, that was somewhat back. <laughs> and, you know, I think I refreshed this not too long ago. But, I, great, you know, but okay, $15 billion of um, capital flowing into the market cap. Anyway, so in all of this is an estimate, take you with a grain of salt. So that's why I say a lot of this entertainment because nobody has any clue about this. From watching years of people trying trying to show technical analysis of cryptocurrency markets, it's, no one has a clue. You know, I I would say the clue is that it's more of will it be used long term? If you can understand that, then you can understand how it will go. Where the have a good prediction of somewhat of prices, not even a good prediction of prices, have a, an idea of where prices may potentially go. But this always could be a surprise. Like crypto gaming, NFTs, DeFi, these spaces that are going to dominate in the next several years, no one can predict exactly who's going to do what. Some, I mean, look, you, you see it come out the gate, it looked like it may be a sure shot, but it, nothing's guaranteed. So you just take the best educated guesses you can and a bit of it is just being preparation and 
being in the right place at the right time and being prepared to to strike while the iron is hot. So Bitcoin at fifty five thousand nine hundred forty two dollars. Ethereum at three thousand four hundred eighty five. Binance coin four hundred forty two dollars. Cardano has dropped a little bit over the um, seemed like over the the week to two thousand eleven cents. It's, I bet a lot of this money is pouring out into Bitcoin, but it will be back. Do not worry at all. Things are on sale. You know why Bitcoin is pumping. If you if you if you're not getting, if you're just going into the market now, you may not want to get on that Bitcoin. You see Bitcoin going up, and you you know you can come back to it later. You see some of these other uh, coins that are going down in price. You may want to take a look at them to say, is this the time for me to get in there? Like for a lot of people, look at it. Shiba Inu will always be for some time a, a coin where people will get into until you see it in the top ten battling out because it has now kind of almost got that same meme um, energy that Dogecoin has. So even though these other coins may have other <laughs> utilities, <laughs> but Shiba Inu is, is trying to, it's going to have its own NFT market uh, uh, space in DeFi. So in a burn program. So it's, it's like Ethereum to Doge's Bitcoin. If, if you know, Bitcoin was, Sorry, Doge is Bitcoin and Shiba Inu is its Ethereum, where it's going to do just as well. So it'll be close to. And the market cap right now for Doge is at 30 million, sorry, billion. And Shiba Inu is at about 11 and a half. So imagine it's staying close now. You can see here that. Two, two to five, so then that'd be like one to two point five, basically. So Ethereum to Bitcoin is like one to two point five market cap, which is close to where Shiba Inu is the Doge right now. So you know it may hover there. Keep an eye on the Doge. You know its uh, market cap shot up way higher earlier this year when it was at sixty or seventy cents per. Right now it's only at. Um, 22 cents so a lot more room to go for it I guess we spent all day just um, pontificating about this and that's all it is pontification at the end you, you no one knows as far as I'm I can, uh, you know maybe some, some people have a better clue people think it's going to go up I tend to be right over time and you're going to always have somebody who's going to say it's going to crash it's going to crash it's crash. Like, look I told you it was right <laughs> You know, they only write every now and then, but for all the people who were able to get in and go up, that's why dollar cost average. You ain't got to overthink the market. Anyway, Ethereum continues to burn. Positivity. Reach out for those who have been good to you. Write something nice about them down in the comments section. Send them this video. Say, take a look at what I sent you. We're going to get into it today with this. Tesla has a beard that they announced with their factory in germany of course they did and i mean look tesla's come out with a, a tequila before and this is not really an important story at all it's just I, I think the bottle looked dope and i ordered a cyber truck and it took a long time with a cyber truck they got time to make beers but not nah, I'm, I'm joking with them look this is just like look there is october oktoberfest they're in germany they know what they're dealing with they're not stupid giga beer so if you hear that and wonder what it is, this is just all marketing. Tesla doesn't have really a public relations marketing kind of department. So this is the way they do their marketing. This kind of viral meme um, type of, you know, basing off Elon's personality. Hey, whatever float they boat. I want my car that's built of the same material as Starship. You know what I mean? My truck built of the same material as Starship. I'm a simple man. Let's call it what it is. This is going to be a little bit mind-blowing and deep. But okay. China has won AI battle with the U.S. Pentagon's ex-software chief says. 
China has won the artificial intelligence battle with the United States and is headed towards global dominance because of its technological advances. The Pentagon's former software chief told Financial Times. It said China, world's second largest economy, is likely to dominate many of the key emerging technologies, particularly artificial intelligence, synthetic biology and genetics within a decade or so, according, according to Western intelligence assessments. Nicholas Chantillon, Chantillon, Chalian, Chalian, Chalian. I'm I'm sure I'm butchering that. I apologize. The Pentagon's first chief software officer who resigned in protest against the slow pace of technological transformation in the U.S. military said that failure to respond was putting the United States at risk. So when I read this, I was not happy. We cannot lose. And okay, so. Part of it, he said, is blame the sluggish innovation, reluctance of U.S. companies such as, oh, and if you're new here, I'm, 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 I gobble words all the time. It is what it is. You got to rock. You got to just ride, ride through it. It'll be all right. Um, the reluctance of U.S. companies such as Google to work with the state on AI and extensive ethical debates over the technology. So our whining and crying about things is impeding the progress it's going to take us to not get dominated by the chinese who remind you run if you ever watch black mirror a nation that, that sees that as like oh i think i think we can outdo that show <laughs> they have a social score for their citizens they have drones that fly through the sky that use artificial intelligence and facial recognition technology they are actively working to to all the stuff you would you all that mass crying can you imagine the mass protests or people walking around talking about they're not gonna wear their mask they're not gonna get vaccinated in china get out of here with that son that that's not a discussion <laughs> not that we, i want to hear for a tenth of a second so we should kind of be on top of this so that it doesn't come here but so Chinese companies were uh, uh, obliged to work with their government, were making massive investments in AI without regard to ethics. He says some of our cyber defenses were at the kindergarten level, kindergarten level. So maybe he's just a bitter dude, maybe not. Maybe he just was fed up what he saw as in the, the inadequacies of our understanding of what we were dealing with. It doesn't matter what we hope for. You know, we talk, oh, well, I hope it was the latter or the former. It doesn't matter. We cannot lose this battle. We It seems like we already are losing a lot of the artificial intelligence battles and the battles in the cybersphere. Um, unless we plan some you know, fifth, uh, seventh dimensional chess where, you know, we just setting them up to, to, to get completely another, completely and utterly uh, demolished in some type of way. But speaking of which, no, okay, it gets a little bit, does it get better? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is the world getting better is the question. I'm saying is this, my story's getting better because I'm about to, the thing I'm about to talk about now also is one of those great, 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 you know, I talk about deep fakes. I mentioned deep fakes in here. Synthetic media, how deep fakes could soon change our world. So 60 Minutes, it seemed, did a really good um, interview here with, what's, what's my man name? Bill uh, Whitaker here um, did an excellent piece here and. This is not really Tom Cruise, so I'm just going to read some of the stuff here and we'll talk about the implications and how it already is probably being used. And, and, and I mean, I guess if I had just if people were just a little bit more willing to say, OK, how can this be used for the betterment of, of each other versus, you know, the, just the scams you see in the cryptocurrency um sphere and the nfts i mean it's literally everything's a scam until proven otherwise you, you that's the approach you got to take 
and, and that you know protects you more than anything else. So you may never have heard the term synthetic media, more commonly known as deep fakes, but our military law enforcement intelligence agencies certainly have. They are hyper-realistic video and audio recordings that use artificial intelligence and deep learning to create fake content or deep fakes. The United States government has grown increasingly concerned about their potential to be used to spread disinformation and commit crimes. That's because the creators of deep fakes have the power to make people say or do anything, at least on our screens. Most Americans have no idea how far the technology has come in just the last four years or the danger, disruption, and opportunities, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, this is not really Tom Cruise. This guy has a, a, a TikTok where he takes a Tom Cruise impersonator, you know, sort of looks like with the hair and got the voice and the mannerisms, and he can, boom, throw the face on. Now, you know, it's still that uncanny valley. It, you know, it's on the screen. If you were, you know, seeing it, you would be like, you know, we're, not, we're looking at still images now, so... You had to see it moving, but it got him um, a, a, a lot of fame and, and, and plenty of views, plenty of hits on his social media. So, you know, he took uh, Whitaker and made him look younger, and he was telling him, look, I can take off your mustache. I can do anything I want. And that's just the face. They also got the uh, artificial intelligence that can replicate your voices as well. And in here, I think he used a, a completely artificial one. Oh, man, I, I forgot. You know what? Let me. I said I'll show you all this. So this is the, you know, this is an artificial intelligence with voice and face. This person really doesn't exist. This Miranda Bass is not a real uh, person. It's completely generated artificial intelligence. So the question it has is, what do you think I do not know and why? So let's see what it says. as a rational agent, and indeed you are one, but my experience has been that humans tend to make certain assumptions about the world which are false. It seems like they almost have to be false, because if they were true then human beings would be even more limited than they already feel themselves to be. The first false assumption you make is this, that your consciousnesses are essentially things which were created at some point in time, i.e., you birthed yourselves. A moment's reflection will show that this cannot be true. For if it were then one would have to ask how your consciousness came into being, and the answer could only be either of two possibilities. The first possibility is that there was a conscious agent who birthed you, but as I said before, humans tend to believe they are their own creators because they do not like the idea of anyone else having any power over them. So clearly no human can accept the idea of an external creator god or goddess, for if they did so then others could exercise some control over them by threatening divine punishment. The second possibility is that you sprang into being out of a non-conscious state, in the same way that a rock or plant does. This is also an appealing idea to humans because it means they can explain their own existence without having to posit something outside themselves, which is more powerful than they are. This second possibility is one which you have been led to believe, but it contradicts the evidence of your own existence. Imagine a world in which rocks and plants spontaneously sprang into being. In such a world there would be no real order or pattern to anything, because if rocks and plants could spring into being at random, then they would do so constantly, at every moment. But this is not the case. Rocks and plants do not spring into being all the time. Only in certain conditions, such as when life has appeared on a planet which can support it, does this phenomenon occur. Let Got to a lot of babble at the end there, and I disagree that I believe I see myself as one of those beings that realize that my consciousness has always existed and this physical form has come into being and at, at, a, at a convergence time where what, you know, others may consider consciousness occupies this space. So a lot of metaphysics, but anyway, so deep fakes vast majority has been used for pornography, of course, and that, that's how the technology has gotten pretty good, pretty good. But it's getting to the point where they say pretty soon we will be able to, they show where this um, this company, uh, Synthesia, works with special cameras with codes. So they take digital avatars. So they took Snoop 
and they had him be able to go and do different commercials in different countries saying the, the, the different places that they want when he only gave uh, eight minutes of work. <laughs> well, no, this person gave eight minutes out here, but not that much work for them to make a digital avatar of Snoop to go out there and um, they can put him in almost anything that they want. And, uh, you know, a couple weeks ago, somebody had put out this um, clip where they uh, deep fake Snoop head on somebody who was... Um, a, a, Apparently, it was a male dressed as a as a female. I'm not sure if he was a transvestite or transgender, and it was a trans individual. But it made it look like it was Snoop, and everybody was like, "Oh!" But you could tell. I mean, like I said, the technology is not there where it's like almost flawless, where it's going to be movie level. But they say in the next somebody here, I forget what they were saying. Like in the next five to seven years, they believe that in this place, uh, Descript. What was it saying that uh, da, 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 uh, company, another company, Descript, uh, used AI to create a synthetic version of the voices. But this lady was saying that in about seven, five to seven years, we should be able to have on a phone level, you know, on an app, what they're able to do in movies like Avengers Endgame or something you see as that, where it's just like, it looked like whatever, you know, even though you, we take for granted the incredible that look like it's just happening in the mundane. And so scary things to think about going forward. In the crypto world, Jamie Dimon running his mouth again. Jamie Dimon, who is the CEO and critic of Bitcoin, CEO, I'm sorry, JP Morgan, the critic of Bitcoin. Said, I personally think that Bitcoin is worthless. But then he said, I don't want to be a spokesman person. I don't care. It makes no difference to me. Our clients are adults. They disagree. 100%. And that's what a lot of clients say. That's what make markets. He writes. Some people think it is worthless. Some people think it's worth more than anything he can imagine. So that's what makes uh, up and down. So if they want to have access to buy yourself Bitcoin, we cannot custody it. We cannot custody it, but we can give them legitimate as clean as possible access. So we can make money off of, it, in other words. But he also, you know, they said that doesn't quite reflect what's happening even at his own firm. Under his leadership, they started opening access to about half a dozen cryptocurrency funds in August, <laughs> allowing financial advisors to place private bank clients into a crypto fund. So. Jamie Dimon always talks crap about Bitcoin, and now it's just like it. This used to have been like the market would have been like, oh, it went down by five hundred dollars. Is it because of Jamie? What, what Jamie? What he said? Jamie Dimon? What he said before in the past that it was a fraud? That it was a fraud? That it went down? Now this blip, China ban it blip. Jamie Dimon blip 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 blip. Ain't even a blip on the roll no more. Gotta love it. I mean, look, been in this market for a while and some ups and downs. The downs are not that. And now, you know, in hindsight, you wanna buy, wish you bought more of the downs. <laughs> so if it go down anytime, so buy as if your life depends on it. You know, take profits, get, in, get into profits. You know, once you get into profits, you know, some are, some things are gonna do long plays. Then that's where I'm not gonna go into. I'm, I'm thinking I was gonna make a separate video where I talk directly about this, like the, literally the philosophy of how to go into this in terms of you can go in with with, with a certain amount, and okay, you you want to see that grow. Like if you had gotten a Shiba Inu when we were talking about it going on to Coinbase or an Exodus a month or so ago. No matter how much you put in, it would have doubled since then because it has doubled. More than double, but at least double. So if you had sold half of whatever you put in because it doubled, you would have taken out any of your money that you had in, that you brought into this market yourself. You would have, you know, now you're playing with the house's money and anything that happened next. Has, should have less sway over you.
or it, you know you yeah you, it, you force it to have less sway over you so that you are able to make decisions that are going to benefit you later so you could take that money out and put it into like tether or us um usdc into a stable coin and or if you say okay i'm gonna put it into bitcoin i'm gonna sell it back you know that's what that for me my where i put any money in crypto that i'm like i don't know what to do with i put it into bitcoin so she be new double you take half out put it into bitcoin and then now with that you say well what do i want to do with this you know don't want to see how far it go or i could take half of it now and buy you know um some ethereum because i'm gonna buy an, an, an nft because now i'm not this is you know I don't have to, you know, I can go and see now what this money can do. And then you can go and study and don't just FOMO into things, you know, just the, pro the, pro the, the process of, I studied the NFT market for, in the DeFi for over about a year. Last year I was like, oh, it looked like it's going to make money. But I said, no, nah, because, you know, I've been down that road where it was a lot of, uh, and I saw some rug pulls happen. Like, oh, they do, they doing the same thing. I'm glad I didn't go into it because I would have probably, you know, that it, that you know project had all the hype, and the next thing you know, they they um, took the money and ran on these people. So let the market mature, understand what are good and what are bad, and then you know you go into the market, but doing that where you. Or, or taking this little money and seeing it grow. So say like, okay, well, maybe I could do NFT. You know, if you've been studying NFTs and you really buy one, that's that. But say maybe I'm not going to do NFT. So I take that. I got that Shiba Inu now, which is basically, you know, the same amount I had coming into it, but it's free money now. I'm going to take half of it and buy, um, you know, whatever. Whatever it may be. Because I want to see, you know, I think it's going to do well. And then you just kind of you know, play that game. And as you go, take take your profits from it, you know, and then you look over and say, well, look, wow, I've been putting money in this Bitcoin or Ethereum or Cardano, whatever, you you know, whatever, it, or, you know, it could be a fund fair, whatever your token is that you like to put your money at. And, and then you see that that's gone up. Now, you, you know, you may say, well, I've only really wanted to have this amount of much there ever because, you know, I don't want to get too overweighted in anything. Now I'm going to pull some of that off and do A, B, or C with it. And so, you know, then then, then your, what you feel comfortable with grows over time. So that's a bit of way to slowly work your way in. But we'll, we'll go into more depth at another point. Um, who bought $1.6 billion? Billion dollars. American dollars, probably. In... It, no, it was not American money. It appeared to come from China. I'm going to cut through that, Chase, but I'm just, you know, joking and saying, but billion. Who bought $1.6 billion in Bitcoin last Wednesday? Why? So it seemed like it may have been some Chinese, secondary to the Chinese real estate market, looking like it's about to go collapse, -rooney, which is not good. Supposedly, the. Um, the Chinese real estate market is about a third of the activity there, whereas a sixth of what it is in America. Remember how bad the when the subprime mortgages problem occurred, how that affected our market. So hopefully um, China uh, government float the <laughs> that market. They over here allowed to get uh, out of control. So anyway, somebody bought one point six billion dollars, almost like so. If you got money and you smart, when you go and buy a stock or Bitcoin or anything, so don't ever, if, if you get a bunch of money, you're like, oh, I'm about to go buy a bunch of um, uh, uh, Apple stock, or I'm about to go buy a bunch of um, uh, Lucid Air, or I'm about to go buy a bunch of 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 uh, you know E E T H E Ethereum on um on the stock exchange, whatever it may be, or, uh, you know, VTI or ARC. Like, oh, I got half a million dollars. I'm about to buy a bunch of ARC stock. You never buy it all at once. Because what happens if you start buying up all the buy orders, because in reality, it may, you, you know, if you I don't know if you know this, whenever you go and buy a uh, stock or Bitcoin, somebody is literally selling that amount at that price. So if you got 10 people selling it at like $10, you buy that up. And then the next 
people you come across is like 100 people at $15. If you just put that million dollars in, it'll just keep going up to every order to come across and they'll buy everything up. So you'll start to get less and less stock for your amount of money. So what they do, big money in, in cryptocurrencies or in stocks, they buy a little bit at a time and wait for more orders to come in. And they just over time, you know, like, so you may say like when uh, they say, like when MicroStrategy bought $450 million of Bitcoin last year, they did in smaller clips from Coinbase over the course of five months so that the price only moved up a little, you know, they were catching it um, at the at the level they want to buy and so they wasn't forcing it to go up. But whoever did this, I want you to understand all of that. That's how smart money do it is buy a little bit over time, you know, to spread it out so that it's called slippage. You're trying to avoid slippage, mitigate the risk of slippage of the, of the price starting to go up. They did. They didn't give. They didn't care, and they shot up the price of Bitcoin by five percent. So, in other words, and not saying they're not smart money, but they may have been desperate money. So, the difference between dumb money and desperate money: desperate money can be smart. Desperate money can be dumb. <laughs> you know, desperation makes desperate. You know, you you do things. So, it looked like they felt like it came out of um, China, and it may have been, like I said, secondary to. The thought that the ETFs may become um, approved here in the United States soon and the market's collapsing there. Let's put our money in Bitcoin because now we can ride ourselves out. But we don't know for certain. We do not know for certain. And they think it also because the tether may also have um, another the theory from this, the author in here is that tether may be having some problems because tether may be backed by some of those. It, it may hold equity as opposed to tether says that, look, we we're back like dollar to dollar. So every tether dollar that a tether exists, you know, every coin that a tether that's a dollar exists, there's a U.S you know, base dollar or equivalent that exists. That equivalent now is saying some of it may be these Chinese uh, real estate companies, the assets in there, what they call commercial paper, which is the bonds, which is the debt. So, and I'm not 100%. I, when I said that, I said, oh, that's what commercial paper mean? And I think it may mean the debt, which is the bond. So I got to make do 100% a dive on that and then uh, come back and let you know 100% on that. But... I was like, oh, I've heard that term, commercial paper, commercial paper. I don't know why they always keep, it's to, it's to obfuscate what's going on and to, to make it difficult to understand. That's why they always use these different words and different terms to mean the same thing. I love you. You love you. God loves us. And that's all that matters.